The key word in Proverbs is wisdom, and wisdom is understanding the word of truth. It's only through the Lamb slain, that is to say, Christ Jesus, who is the word of God, that we can understand God's word in its simplicity and remain a virgin bride, spiritually speaking, and a branch of God's family tree, the tree of life, the many-membered body of the true Christ, and a citizen of the heavenly Jerusalem, the city of the living God. Not a geographical location on earth, but the Jerusalem. Jerusalem, which is above, and it's staying in our Father's Word, prayerfully studying His truth chapter by chapter and verse by verse that prevents us from being deceived now and especially at the sixth seal, the sixth trumpet, and the sixth vial when Satan appears as the false Christ in the Jerusalem of this world, which is when most Christians will die spiritually and become grafted into Satan's family tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, ceasing to be virgin spiritually speaking and becoming citizens of Babylon, the city of confusion. But during the sixth trumpet, God's elect will be delivered up and Christ will give them a mouth and wisdom that none of their adversaries can gainsay nor resist, causing many to repent and come out of Babylon, which means confusion, and be grafted back into God's family tree because of what the Holy Spirit will say through God's elect at that time. So with that having been said, with a word of wisdom from our Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Proverbs Proverbs chapter 31, the words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. And as you can see in your Strong's Concordance, Lemuel means belonging to God, a symbolic name of Solomon. Just as we saw with Agur in the last chapter and in the future since the apostasy of Solomon that you can read of in 1 Kings chapter 11, right after we see the 600, 3 score and 6 in chapter 10 verse 14 looks forward to the great apostasy, the apostasy in the Greek, written of in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. That's when most Christians are deceived into worshiping Satan instead of Christ, which is what Antichrist means. So with that in mind, we can take this as a warning to all Christians coming from our Father, from the heavenly Jerusalem, the mother of us all, figuratively speaking. As it's written in Galatians chapter 4 verse 26, Jerusalem which is above is free, which is the mother of us all, as in the motherland, the final destination of all who love our Heavenly Father. So the words of King Lemuel, the prophecy, I repeat, prophecy his mother taught him, our Heavenly Father being the source of all prophecy and all wisdom. What, my son, and what the son of my womb, and what the son of my vows? Give not thy strength unto women, nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. And again, don't lose sight of the big picture here, and the lion of Daniel chapter 7, which is symbolic of the Christian nations, a king so to speak, and it's when Satan appears as Antichrist that he'll destroy many with peace, as we know from Daniel chapter 8, verse 25. Only it's a false peace because it's the false Christ. Satan claiming to be the prince of peace, but he's really that old serpent called the devil and Satan. And the foreign woman that symbolizes the Kenites, the Nacar in the Hebrew at this time, through their four hidden dynasties, are brainwashing those of the Christian nations, setting them up to die spiritually at six when they become the many-membered body of the Antichrist along with the Kenites in Satan's one world religious system. The Zer in the Hebrew, which means the apostate woman. It is not for kings, O Lemuel. It is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink. Lest they drink and forget the law, God's law, that is to say, and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. Give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish, and wine unto those that be of heavy heart. That means bitter of soul in the Hebrew, as you can see pointed out in your companion Bible, so we're speaking spiritually here in the ultimate future sense. Let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his misery no more. And in looking at this as it applies to all Christians spiritually, we see the whore of Babylon, which means confusion in Revelation 17, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, that's idolatry, to the utmost extreme when the world whores after Satan except for those who know and understand the truth of God's word. And the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication, the Zer, which means the apostate woman we read of throughout the book of Proverbs. To be made drunk means you're in a stupor of confusion, which is what Babylon means when she takes part in the apostasia, ceasing to be a virgin bride when she merges with the Kenites, spiritually the Nacar in the Hebrew, in their Antichrist 
religion, worshiping Satan instead of Christ. So give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish, because those who become part of the many-membered body of the son of perdition will perish in the lake of fire along with Satan unless they get their act together during the thousand years, or repent before the seventh trumpet, coming out of Babylon and having their citizenship reinstated in the heavenly Jerusalem, the exact opposite of Babylon. Notice both are called that great city in the book of Revelation because for every positive there's a negative. You're either going into the eternity or you're going into the lake of fire. It's that simple, heaven or hell. And verses 4 through 7 of this 31st chapter have a more obvious explanation also that can be summed up in 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Satan being the false lion of the false tribe of Judah, the synagogue of Satan, the Nacar in the Hebrew, the sons of Cain. And if you don't know who the Kenites are, that makes you a prime candidate for the apostasia at the sixth seal, the sixth trumpet, and the sixth vial, when by peace Satan will destroy many, spiritually speaking, only it's a false peace because he's the false Christ. Open thy mouth for the dumb, and the cause of such you are appointed to destruction. Plant as many seeds as you can, now more than ever, appointed to destruction in the future sense, meaning either those who aren't Christian or those who are but are biblically illiterate and set up to worship the destroyer when he appears in Jerusalem. Open thy mouth, judge righteously according to our Father's word, and plead the cause of the poor and needy. If nothing else, pray for those that are spiritually poor and needy that their eyes be open to the truth while there's still time. And don't ignore the physical meaning of these verses either, as well as the physical meaning of this entire book of Proverbs. Plead the cause of the poor and needy in every sense, bearing in mind that the spiritual is much more important because it's our Heavenly Father's will that all come to repentance through the Lord Jesus Christ. The remaining 22 verses are an acrostic, meaning each verse begins with a letter of the Hebrew alphabet, Christ being the Alpha and the Omega, which are the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet, and the virtuous woman here is a type of the Lamb's wife, the virgin bride who waits for the true husband to return at the seventh trumpet, as opposed to the whore of Babylon. Both the New Jerusalem and Babylon are described as cities in the book of Revelation, and as we go through this, we'll be looking at the difference between the virtuous woman of Proverbs chapter 31 and that great city Babylon, which means confusion, bearing in mind the type brought forth with the apostasy of Solomon in 1 Kings chapter 11. Who can find a virtuous woman? for her price is far above rubies. And remember that the price of wisdom is above rubies also, as it's written in Job chapter 28, verse 18. Wisdom being the key word in the book of Proverbs. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. The true husband being the true Christ and in the eternity with all having been tested throughout this second world age, which ends with the millennium, that's when there'll be true peace on earth forever and ever, which is what Solomon means, peace, a type of Christ up until his downfall when he became a type of what most Christians will do when Satan appears as the instead of Christ at 666. And again, notice 600, 3 score and 6 in 1 Kings chapter 10 verse 14, just before the apostasy of Solomon in chapter 11. And here is wisdom, let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man that man of sin, the son of perdition, written of in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. But she, the virtuous woman, which is symbolic of those who go into the eternity, will do him good, the true husband, that is to say, the true Christ, and not evil all the days of her life. Those who believe upon the only begotten Son of God will have everlasting life and will not perish in the lake of fire. And this can even include those who were deceived by Satan at the sixth trumpet, but then repented coming out of the confusion before the true husband returned, or those who take part in the second resurrection after the thousand years are finished, choosing to love our Heavenly Father enough to wash their robes in the blood of the Lamb during the thousand years, giving them the wherewithal to stand against Satan after the thousand years are finished. Remember, Solomon repented, and so will many others between the apostasia and the great white throne judgment. God's will is that none should perish, but the 
let all come to repentance. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. The fine linen we wear in our spiritual bodies being made up of our righteous acts as Christians, primarily planting seeds of truth, which is what it is to bear fruit for the kingdom of God. That's why Christ says in Revelation chapter 16, Behold, I come as a thief, because most people will think Satan is Christ and has already returned. So Christ returning is the last thing they'll expect. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. They'll lose credit for all their righteous acts when they worship Satan instead of Jesus. Being made naked, that is to say, and Christ would also warn the Laodiceans in Revelation chapter 3 to buy of him gold tried in the fire and white raiment so that they could be clothed as opposed to naked and ashamed upon his return. In other words, he's telling them to repent there, the time frame of the seven letters to the seven churches being after Satan's appearance as Antichrist, at the sixth trumpet, and also after the delivering up of the Zadok, which is when the Holy Spirit will speak through them, bringing many out of the confusion and back into God's family tree. She is like the merchant ship. She bringeth her food from afar, as opposed to merchants of the earth weeping and mourning over the destruction of Babylon, which means confusion, at the seventh trumpet, as you can see in Revelation chapter 18. She riseth also while it is yet night, and giveth meat to her household, and a portion to her maidens. And remember the faithful and wise servant Christ spoke of in Matthew 24, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season, that is to say the truth of God's word. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh at the seventh trumpet, shall find so doing. Different analogies, same meaning, which is to remain faithful to the true Christ, spreading God's word in any way you can. She considereth a field, and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hand, she planteth a vineyard. And the fruit we are to produce as Christians is accomplished by planting seeds of truth, whereby God willing, they hear and understand, and are grafted into God's family tree, the many-membered body of the true Christ. She girdeth her loins with strength, with truth, as it's written in Ephesians 6, 14, and strengtheneth her arms, strength being one of the seven things the lamb slain was found worthy to receive, as we know from Revelation chapter 5, verse 12. Power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And through Christ, and only through Christ, we as Christians can receive these things also. Not because we are worthy, but because Christ Jesus is worthy. And if we abide in him, and him in us, we bring forth much fruit, as Christ says in John chapter 15, verse 5. For without Christ Jesus, we can do nothing. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good, her candle goeth not out by night. As opposed to Babylon, because as you can see in Revelation chapter 18, verse 23, the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee, when Babylon, which means confusion, is destroyed forever and ever. And with that great city, as it's called, ceasing to exist, the citizens of Babylon are cast into the outer darkness. And if they don't stand against Satan after the thousand years are finished, they will perish. So again, give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish, and wine unto those that be of heavy hearts, which means bitter of soul, because when the true Christ returns, great Babylon will come in remembrance before God, as it's written in Revelation chapter 16, verse 19, to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath, the great day of his wrath being the thousand years, the great tribulation. She layeth her hands to the spindle, and her hands hold the distaff. Again, carrying out God's will to the best of our ability is how we weave together day by day the fine linen that we wear in our spiritual bodies. And as it's written in Revelation 19, beginning with verse 7, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, the Lord God omnipotent, as we know from the previous verse, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her it was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints, the set-aside ones who are God's elect, but in the eternity all are citizens of the new Jerusalem, the Lamb's wife, this virtuous woman we're reading of in this last chapter of the book of Proverbs. She stretcheth out her hand to the poor, yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. Those we see being misled by the four hidden dynasties we are to at least plant a seed with, whereby God willing they can buy that gold tried in the fire and white 
raiment that you can read of in Revelation chapter 3 so they can be rich rather than poor, spiritually speaking, and clothed rather than naked. And he goes on to tell them to anoint their eyes with eye salve so they can see the truth. Again, the time frame of Revelation chapters 2 and 3 is during the sixth trumpet. But even now, the opportunity to get into our Father's Word chapter by chapter and verse by verse is there for the taking. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. That is to say, the blood of the lamb slain, Christ Jesus. We're not afraid of being harvested in the winter time. that is to say, out of season by the false Christ, because we study God's word to the point that we know the true husband won't return at all until the seventh trumpet. And notice the whore of Babylon wears scarlet also and sits upon a scarlet colored beast. That is to say, Satan, who will claim to be the true husband returned at the sixth trumpet when the great apostasy occurs and the virgin bride of Christ for the most part becomes the whore of Babylon when the false wedding takes place. In other words, the scarlet in Revelation 17 is symbolic of spiritual murder as opposed to Christ's bloodshed on the cross that brings about eternal life to whosoever will. In reality, the whore of Babylon isn't really wearing anything because a Christian loses credit for their righteous acts when they worship Satan instead of Christ, which is what Antichrist means. And when they die spiritually, they're no longer Christians, they're anti-Christians, that is to say, instead of Christians, the many-membered body of the false Christ. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry, her clothing is silk and purple, which you also see on the Whore of Babylon, but again, for every positive, there's a negative, and in my opinion, the purple on the Whore of Babylon is symbolic of the left-right paradigm of the political dynasty, which sucks people in to Satan's one world religious system, hence the purple, which is blue mixed with red, the left-right paradigm. But on the positive end of the spectrum, purple was among the colors used to build the tabernacle, as you can see in Exodus chapter 25. The pattern being not a plan, but a model, as Bullinger points out in the Companion Bible, the reality is in heaven, so with the temple later. And you'll remember Christ, who is the temple of God, was clothed in a purple robe just prior to his death on the cross, at which time the veil was rent, salvation being open to whosoever will from that point forward, and upon accepting Christ, we become a citizen of the heavenly Jerusalem, the city of the living God, Mount Zion, as we know from Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22, not a geographical location on earth, but the Jerusalem which is above the Lamb's wife. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land upon his return at the seventh trumpet in righteousness he doth judge as we know from Revelation chapter 19 the elders of the land being the 24 elders written of in the book of Revelation as well as the rest of the 7,000 Zadok that you can read of in Ezekiel 44 the only ones allowed to approach Christ during the thousand years but after the great white throne judgment after the thousand years are finished all who are alive and remain will be gathered together and so shall we all ever be with the Lord in the new Jerusalem in the third world age. She maketh fine linen and selleth it and delivereth girdles unto the merchant, the fine linen which is the wedding garment of the virgin bride of Christ. And those of the Zadok Christ brings with him at the seventh trumpet are clothed in fine linen also, the elders of the land. And you can read more about the linen garments of the Zadok in Ezekiel chapter 44, the fine linen being the righteousness of saints, the virgin bride metaphor being there to help us understand the faithfulness our Father expects from us, whereby we can better understand the emotions of our Heavenly Father and do that which is pleasing to Him. Strength and honor are her clothing, two of those seven things listed in Revelation chapter 5 verse 12, the Lamb slain was found worthy to receive, and she shall rejoice in the time to come, when the true husband returns at the seventh trumpet. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, the key word of the book of Proverbs, and in her tongue is the law of kindness, that is to say God's law from whom all wisdom flows. And as Christ says in Luke 21, when you're delivered up for refusing to worship Satan during the sixth trumpet, don't premeditate what you shall answer, for he will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist if you're one of those the Holy Spirit will speak through at that time. And it's because of what the Holy Spirit will say that many will come out of Babylon, which means confusion, repenting, and being grafted back into God's family tree where
whereby they can take part in the first resurrection when the true husband returns. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. And now, more than ever, we should be planting more and more seeds of truth, because the hour of temptation is closer now than it's ever been before. At the same time, don't neglect to do that which is necessary to provide for your household according to the flesh. As you can see brought forth in this example of a virtuous woman carrying out all her obligations with perfect precision because she puts the will of our Heavenly Father first and God's will is that none should perish but all come to repentance. Plant those seeds of truth now while there's still time and stay in the Word, remaining a wise virgin, spiritually speaking, with enough oil in your lamp to make it to the end of the hour of darkness, that is to say the five-month-long hour of temptation. Her children arise up and call her blessed, spiritual children on the deeper level in the same way Paul considered Timothy his own son in the faith, because Paul was utilized to bring Timothy into the truth, and so it is with the children of this virtuous woman. Her husband also, which is the true Christ, and he praiseth her, and as Christ will say to those who are found faithful and waiting for his return at the seventh trumpet, Come ye blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. That's when the sheep are separated from the goats, the good figs from the evil figs at the harvest, which begins at the seventh trumpet. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. And so it is when you remain on the true rock, which is the true Christ, being a doer of the word, with God's will being your primary objective. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised, because the fear, which means the reverence of Yahweh, our Heavenly Father, the Lord Most High, is the beginning of wisdom, and wisdom is understanding our Father's word. Hearken unto the voice of the Lord our God diligently, chapter by chapter and verse by verse, to the best of your ability, asking for his leadership, guidance, and direction, as well as that word of wisdom in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb slain, who is the true husband, Yahweh's Savior. Verse 31, to complete the book of Proverbs, give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. The gates being where the judgment takes place, ultimately the great white throne judgment. And if you're in Christ at that time, then you're Abraham's seed and an heir according to the promise. And as God says to Abraham in Genesis chapter 15 verse 1, fear not, I am thy shield, God is your shield through the Lord Jesus Christ and thy exceeding great reward. He that overcometh shall inherit all things as it's written in Revelation chapter 21 verse 7, the same chapter where we see the holy city, the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven prepared as a bride adorned for her husband, the lamb's wife. Those who are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise, the true promised lamb being the eternity with the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end, God Almighty.